This is session five, part two. Choice. And God is never going to re release it for us because it's not God's creation. God will help us go through the release, mm -hmm. but God will never do it for us. Right? So every person who expects Jesus to come along and make all their fear go away or God to come along and make all their fear go away has a severe flaw in their logic. God created the ability for the human soul to experience whatever it wishes to experience and we chose to experience fear. We are going to have to choose to release it, to, to let it go, to, to change the experience. We are going to have to choose that if we ever want fear to disappear. Mm. Now, there was a second part to her to Is the there question. actually a reason for fear? Of course there's a reason for fear, and I think I've also already yeah. explained that. The reason for all of our fears are all about our resistance to truth and love. Mm -hmm. Real love and real truth I'm talking about, not mm -hmm. this fake stuff that we've got going on on mm -hmm. the earth. So whenever we resist love and whenever we resist truth, whenever love is not flowing, whenever truth is not flowing, fear will be created. Mm -hmm. And fear will become an emotional experience that's inside of us that we will either choose to hold on to or release. Right. And would you say that our desire to hold on to false beliefs is what... It's the major cause of all of our fear. It's, and so fear enters us and then we want to hold on to these false beliefs and so it, it never goes away. Never and goes away. The and it gets passed exists. down to the next generation. When I hold on to my fear of all my false beliefs, remembering that all of, according to how we've discussed about the human soul and how it functions, all of my false beliefs are emotional. Mm -hmm. So these are emotions that are within me. I get together with you, we have a baby, right? That child is now absorbing all of my emotional beliefs. Yeah. It doesn't have any way of preventing the absorption, mm -hmm. so it absorbs them. And as a result, that child, by the time it's born, has already got a fair degree of fear in it. Yeah. Not, not the same fear as me because it has yet to be suppressed. It could experience it. And this is why most children cry for a lot. Yes. Because they have a lot of tears to feel because of what they've already absorbed. Mm -hmm. right? Any child who was born perfect, any child that was born without, without any fear in the parents would, would arrive in this world in a calm and placid place. You don't, you don't see many of the animals screaming their heads off when they're born. Mm -mm. You see them jumping around, enjoying themselves within a few hours. Is yes. that not the case? Yes. Why do we see animals doing that? Because the parents aren't passing down the fear. The mm -hmm. fear comes from humanity. Mm -hmm. It's our fear. That, that, that animals feel. They don't have fear inside us. They don't have a soul to feel fear. We are the ones with the soul feeling fear. That's the reason why a lot of animals are born with a lot more simple processes and procedures than what we give birth yeah. as because of our fear. Yeah. And, and we need to see how, how endemic, it's like a pandemic. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a worldwide problem, this, this, the, this viewpoint of fear. But, but also we need to see that it is our own creation and the majority of people on this planet do not see it as their own creation mm -hmm. and they do not see that their own suppression of it causes more of it. They do not see that either. Fear is the worst problem on the planet. Yeah. It's worse than anger because yes. fear causes anger. Yes. Without fear, you would never get angry. right? And without suppression of fear, I should say, you would never get angry. So fear is the worst problem on the planet. Mm -hmm. And... And this is why I've given talk after talk after talk about it. But even the people doing the transcribing ever talks don't want to transcribe those talks <laughs> because they're afraid. <laughs> so it's like fear. It's amazing how much fear affects people. Yes. Right. And, and fear is, is our worst problem because it resists truth mm -hmm. and it resists love. Mm -hmm. And as, as such, while we honour fear, we will never progress in love. It's impossible to progress in love while we honour fear. Mm -hmm. We need to feel it, let it go. We need to experience it, let it go. We need to go through the fear and we need to see that none of our fears are actually real from God's perspective. None of them. Even our fear of death is not real from God's perspective because you don't actually die. Yeah. Like, and all of the other things that we create, we are so terrified of pain and we don't see it as our own creation. God never created pain. Mm -hmm. God created the ability of your soul to feel pain when you suppress things, yeah. uh, like to tell you when you've done something out of harmony with connection with God. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why we experience pain. It's all the same thing. We choose to blame God 
for what we have created. And while we're doing that, we will never get, become at one with God, but also we can never be happy yeah. because we're blaming someone else for our own creation. Mm -hmm. We need to take responsibility for our own creation and work our way through the actual results of our own creation and release from ourselves what's going on with our creation. Mm. Yeah. So that, like, these kind of questions are interesting, I feel, because they blame God for things that God's never done. Yeah. And, and it's so important for people to see that, mm -hmm. that God's never created, God never created anger, God never created fear, God never created violence, God didn't create these things, we created them. Mm. We created them because we live in fear. We create them because we're unwilling to feel our own pain. We want other people to share in our pain. We want other people to pay for our pain. That's why we created fear. And that's why, you know, it's all the, these creations of our own that we're not taking responsibility for. We blame everything else other than ourselves, you know. Yeah. And we've got to start seeing who is the real cause. Mm -hmm. The real cause is our own choice to live out of harmony with love and truth. Mm -hmm. That's the cause. It's mm. a great answer. Thank you. I suppose that was a fairly long tirade. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I feel it's, it's such an important subject. Yeah. I, I often see God getting blamed for, for things that are going on on the earth when God had nothing to do with them, nothing to do with them. And the only thing that God participated in most of them is that giving us the gift of free will that we have then used badly. It's like... It's like somebody giving us the gift of a knife and we go around stabbing a whole heap of people and ourselves and then saying, well, it's real painful, this knife, <laughs> yeah. right, instead of using it for what it's created for, yes. right? Yeah. And so, you know, what, which is, I feel, making some meals up for us yeah. and eating or enjoying some food or whatever. Yeah. Now, you know, there are, we need to see the truth of it. Like, and this is what we're doing with God. God gives us this wonderful gift that's very useful, <laughs> actually, <laughs> You know, free will is a very useful gift. If we weren't given it, we'd just be automations of yeah. God rather than the free will, the free beings that we are. So it's a necessary place to, to it's a necessary gift to give somebody if they're ever going to be completely free. Mm -hmm. And so God gives us this beautiful gift of freedom and we go around and use it badly and then complain about the results. That's very, very stupid. Really, yeah. we're very stupid. We need to start saying, no, the results are, the direct, are directly caused by our own choices. And we need to stop blaming God for things that are our own choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And stop having this kind of fatalistic attitude towards our fear of like, oh, I'm a helpless party in this, you know. It's yeah. sort of like, what's the re what could possibly be the reason for this? Because it's got nothing to do with me. I know that... Mm. Many of us have had that feeling of And that's this, the implication I'm of this question, of isn't fear. it? Yeah. Like the implication of the question is, is there actually a reason for fear? Like yeah. why would God create something so stupid as fear? Is and it? that I that I feel so <laughs> terrible about it and not really <laughs> understanding that that's under my control. Yeah. And, yeah. and God's not stupid. No. God doesn't create fear. No. God why would God ever want to create fear? God created with you the potential for you to experience everything that you create. Yeah. And when you deny truth and deny love, you're going to create fear. That's what you're going to do. And you're going to then have to deal with the consequences of it because God says it's your creation, your creation, humanity's creation. We need to collectively start to see it as our, our creation and understand that we can undo it. Yeah. We can undo it. We can reverse this creation. Yes. It's not, it's not a given or a foregone, foregone conclusion that fear will be a part of our lives. It's no. not a it's not a necessary part of how we exist. It's not a fact we have to get used to. It's no. not any of those things. No. It's something that can be gone yes. from our life yes. forever. Forever. Uh, but that's up to us and yes. we're going to have to stop blaming God for it yes. <laughs> in order and, for that to happen. And the sad thing about blaming God for it, is that while we blame God for it, we're not taking responsibility for it. Mm -hmm. And when we don't take responsibility for something, it's impossible for us to actually fix it. And, and this is our problem, is while we're blaming God and while we blame everything, everybody else, and not looking inside of ourselves, we're really blaming everybody for what we have created. Mm -hmm. And we're blaming God in particular for what we have created. And God never created it. And while we blame God, we are not taking responsibility. Yeah. We have a huge issue with responsibility. Yeah. We are responsible for our own creations and we are also responsible 
for destroying our own creations. That are out of harmony with love. That are out of harmony yeah. with love. So we need, if we're going to destroy fear, mm-hmm. we, need, we are the people who need to do it. God's yeah. not going to do it for us. Yeah. God can help us, but God's not going to do it for us. Mm-hmm. We need to engage our will to do it. Mm-hmm. And that's the way it works. And so it should. Yes. If you think about it, yeah. so it should. Yeah. We can't make choices in our lives only to have somebody else come and rescue us from our choices all the time mm-hmm. and then be responsible beings. The only way we can be responsible beings is by making a choice and then dealing with the consequence, good or bad, of that choice. Yeah. That's the only way we can be responsible beings. Mm. Mm.